Greetings, Kerbinauts! This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number 28 of Project Odyssey, but I'm afraid it's going to be another short one, because I have spent most of the week still either working on Project Odyssey to make sure it's compatible with 0.25 of KSP, or I have been playing around with the ideas that I mentioned last time about doing history in real solar system or in doing some sort of a stock campaign. Although I get the feeling that people don't completely get what I mean by that. And so I'm making pilot episodes of each of those ideas. They're almost done now. I should have them any day. Meanwhile, here in Odyssey, I've been relaunching several of my craft, making sure that they still fly right, that they still have the appropriate sizing because some of the nodes and model files and stuff changed in between 0.24 and 0.25. So a lot of different mod makers have needed to update all of their parts, and in some cases, I've needed to do the same thing myself. In a past episode, you saw that I had launched my airlock module up to Odyssey Station. Well, I have gotten that reconfigured back to a nice 0.25 compatible version, and right here I was testing it out. This is not the real launch. This was me doing, remember how I've said before that I will launch things, and then if everything goes well, that's considered the simulation and then I commit to the real thing and whatever happens on the real thing, that's what stands. If something goes wrong then, I deal with it. But this was just the simulation, so we were docking this up to make sure that all of the parts worked properly. I keep a notepad and a pen by my desk, and as I'm launching, I will pause and write down a note and then fly a little bit more and then pause and write down a note. And if I remember correctly, on this launch, I decided that I needed more hydrazine in the tug and that I had used up too much of the actual UDMH and NTO from that tug, and so I wanted to put some solid boosters on the original launcher that brought this up so that I could absorb some of the delta V cost into the boosters and then conserve some of the fuel that's in the tug. You can see here I was also testing all of the science instruments. I have ScanSat set up. I have carbonite and cathane capability, although I believe I'm going to use cathane. And then I gave the real launcher a try. This is the one I had committed to. Whatever happens here, that's what stands. And as it turns out, this launch went fairly well. I added those solid boosters on the side. Oh, also in a moment, you're going to see that those solid boosters are working much better now that I've got all the bugs shaken out. Look at how they decouple properly now. And they don't explode. They don't crash back into the ship. For the most part, everything that is in my GitHub right now is in pretty good shape. Actually, I'm curious if there are people who are trying to follow what I'm doing up in the GitHub. Now, I'm doing it so that I can track my own progress and be able to revert anything if I ever break my install or if I need to redo it again. I have that hub, but is anybody out there actually doing the same thing, trying to follow my installation instructions and do the same launches here with my install now that you have that ability to do so? If you are, leave a comment. Let me know. I'm really curious how it goes for you. So the true airlock has now docked up and I want to move this tug over to a different location because I had it attached to the airlock and when I bring the crew up they're not going to be able to go in and out of that door if I have this tug still in that spot. So we're moving this over to be behind the station. I figured the docking port that's the same type of docking port that's on the one side of this tug here that I came up on, that one down at the bottom is going to be used for any kind of refueling or resupplying of the station. So this one will go to the back of the station. I can give you a little status report of how I'm doing on some of my other stuff. I've had to redo the Hydra launcher. In fact, in between making this video, what I do is I flip over to my video editor and I put down some of this and narrate a little bit of it. And then I switch over to my actual game, try assembling some of whatever I'm working on, in this case, the Hydra capsule, make some changes to the nodes, make some changes to part sizes or my model files, whatever it is that I'm going to do, and that requires me then to reload the game. So while I'm reloading the game, I come back over to the editor and I continue working on the episode. I won't really have any Hydra type stuff to show you this one, I don't think, but I should have something probably by the next episode. 
Now and then when I make a change to something that affects a previous launcher, something that's already gone up, I have to try it again to make sure that I didn't break it, just like I did right here where I was checking on my Tedra satellites, but they're still okay. So if you go up to that GitHub and you pull it down, the save game actually has the current state of my game right now. The submitted save game state currently has all three Tedris satellites. It has Odyssey Station right down here in an inclined orbit going around the planet. And we have the Mooncoms 1 and 2. Although there was a bug where Remote Tech just arbitrarily decided to delete one of my satellites out of my save game. I didn't notice it right away, so later I had to cheat to put one back into position. There's been a very slight change to the Tedra satellite. We'll load one up here so I can give you a quick look at it. You can see that it now has four dishes instead of two that are the little kind in the middle. Also, they're different. The problem I found was that when I had the exact same dish, but I had just scaled it down or up in order to give it different ranges and power settings, the problem I had was when I would look out at the map view and I had my dialog box that just showed those dishes in the list, they all had the same name so I couldn't tell which range was which. So I'm going to have to use different dishes for every range after all. And the reason why there's two extra in the middle is I just figured I have a couple other things that I always seem to want to point to. So if I'm rebuilding it, I'll put two extra dishes on while I'm at it. And that's everything that you're going to find in the save game persistent file that's up in the GitHub right now. You saw those Tedrises, the moon comms, and right here, the space station, Odyssey 2, 3, whatever. Now how about what's new in the VAB? If you do install my game, you might find that it's a little odd when you look at the pod section and see a whole bunch of couplas. Well, the reason for that is each one of them has a different internal. It's just an easy way for me to see what the IVAs look like. Normally, I simply filter them out so that I don't have to see all those parts. I wouldn't actually use them in anything real. They're just for looking at the internals. While we're here, you can see that I've been working on adding some additional parts. This is what the tug is. We got the avionics ring that I'm using on something, but the Hydra capsule is going to be different. It used to look like this, and I've decided this time around we're going to go with a slightly bigger one right down here. So there's a whole new launcher going along with it. Various parts in the propulsion section here are related to that one, but you'll see that when I have it all assembled. There are a few other parts throughout these other tabs that are associated with that as well. We got our Hydra cargo bay and the Hydra core interstage. Over here, there's some decouplers and heat shield stuff. Over here, we have our incorrectly named, apparently, I have to fix that, parachute section. Not quite sure how that got adjustable rail on its name. Certainly there's a bug in one of the CFG files. Bunch of new science parts associated with the new station that went up. And while I'm at it here, this might be interesting to look at. I've downloaded a couple new satellite dishes here. We have this one. We'll open that up. Looks like that. And we have this one. And I will be using these when doing some of my other craft that need to do long range communications. That one looks pretty cool, right? And instead of using these over here, I'll be using these. They aren't completely set up yet because I haven't made those launchers, but I think the Duna network is going to be using one of these for long range. Now before I cut short and end this episode, I'm going to go out here onto the pad and start testing my new Orion style sort of Hydra capsule that I've been working on. While I tell you about another new mod that I'm adding, it's called Planet Shine. This replaces my ambient light mod that was no longer being maintained anyway, and Planet Shine has new features, better features than ambient light adjuster anyway. Come to think of it, there are quite a few new mod folders. Look at this list right here. CMS is new, Clockheed Martian, even though it's out of date, it still works. I've got that. Planet Shine, some Martian Special. I'm always making changes to Odyssey. Got Resource Overview. That's a new mod that goes into my VAB and shows me what's on my craft. I've re-added the Fuel Balancer. A Node Helper, which I'll show off in an AMA next week. Some FASA Parts. Distant Object Mod. And several changes to different subfolders as well. 
Well, let's see now. My 0G Orion slash Hydra testing has resulted in almost blowing up twice. I think we've seen enough this particular time. It's going to be time to come down on our parachutes here, make sure those work okay, make sure the landing legs on the capsule work okay. There's no engines on this yet, but I'm going to have engines on it eventually so that it can use the legs here to land sort of dragon style. After all, that's how this gets its name, right? It's a Hydra because a dragon that has many heads. It's sort of a dragon, it's sort of an Orion, it's many things at once, and therefore, it's a Hydra. Not to be confused with the Captain America Hydra, Hail Hydra. No, this is just a multi-headed dragon. Well now, by next week I should have this done and ready to launch up to the station. I might have a module for the station as well. We're going to need power up there. I noticed that it needs a lot of power for these new electric charge requirements. I'll also see if there's any way that I can get my Duna network going, but I'm only working on this part-time right now. I slowed down a little just so I wouldn't burn out on it. Anyway, until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts. Thank you.